Ciao. Hey fam, it's your IJF. Welcome back to Aqua Discourse, where we embrace the beauty of uncomfortable conversations. And before we get started, you know how it is. I tell you guys about my day. You can tell me about yours in the comments below. I mean, let's make this work. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Actually, like it right now. If you're watching this, like, you're already here. Just like it. Just go ahead and press the Brooklyn Museum heading there next. So, you know, you will be seeing some videos and some content soon um, because Brooklyn stand up and it's February. So, right, let's celebrate. And I'm giving like, um, like it's three month colors. Like I have red nails, green, and then my skin is black. So I win. But um, yeah, February, it is the second month of the year. We're still in the first quarter. So um, I'm still working and grinding. And when I say working and grinding, I'm talking about like working on my series. You know, I don't think I've shared this because I'm still working on it. And I don't like to talk about things unless they're actually going to be executed, executed, executed. I'm working on a show um, that's making me really excited. It's a lot of work doing a podcast, trying to work on a show and have a job. Um, like one of my friends told me, she says, we're not our ancestors' um, wildest dreams. We're their expectations. And I love that. Like that's because, girl, what else do they expect out of us? Mm -mm. Thank God. I just remember God was just like, here you go, sis. So I went on these coffee dates as a big sis, as an auntie, but I don't really like being called auntie because I'm eating and if I ain't effing your uncle, please don't call me auntie. Okay, okay. But back to the point. I, well, let me go back to what I was going to mention. So as, you know, as I'm getting up there in age, I used to always say I would never go on coffee dates or like um, ice cream dates and chow. Don't even let's go to the park, let's go for a walk. When guys say that to me, and it has been said to me, not that much, but uh, enough where I'm just like, is this a normal thing to say? And other women have said, yes, it is pretty, it is pretty normal. But um, when you say that to me, I am immediately like turned off. I'm going to keep looking back and forth because I'm looking at myself on the screen and the camera. But back to the point, um, I went on a date last week. It was supposed to be a coffee day, but we did go at six. And if you know anything about the East Coast right now, it gets really dark, you know, quickly. So I get there at six to this coffee shop. It's in the neighborhood, you know, where I live at. I'm the one who actually suggested the place because, you know, I knew that place. I know how it is. It's the first day. I don't want to do too much. Um, so I chose a place low key. It was like a Thursday night. So, you know, Friday, junior. So it was, it was, it was giving a little something, but not too much because, you know, I don't want to give the wrong impression, right? You know, I'm trying to date and be a big girl. I'm not always just trying to have fun, you know. Um, anywho, career-oriented guy. Um, he has kids, but, you know, he really didn't mention it. kind of, like, slipped out. And I'm just like, okay. I personally would like for someone to lead with, you know, I'm raising human beings. And, yeah, here they are. Um, no, it's my choice to be like, get away, get away, get away. Um, but. Let's be honest. The older you get, um, men are going to have kids. It is what it is. People are going to have kids. Women, men, everybody's going to, you know, it is what it is. So I'm not offended or, well, offended is such a harsh word, but I'm not, I don't have an issue with that. But what I did have an issue with um, is the conversation was revolving around him. As you guys know, I love to talk. I love to talk. Um, and I was the one bringing up topics. I was the one, as the girls are saying now, a conversationalist, okay? I was the one conversing with this guy. And it's just like 40 minutes into the day, I'm just like, okay. I'm going to be quiet too. Let's see what you got, big daddy. Um, but he didn't have anything going. Like, I'm just like, okay, all right. Uh, he was talking about his mama then when, you know, it ended up turning into his mama and her dating life. I'm like... You know what? Maybe we should go back in time where men were paying all the bills and going to war. Because what is going on? No, I'm joking. <laughs> but there, there, this part to me where I'm just like, if I find a man who is the boss, a.k.a. taking care of the bills, I got to. That's what's happening. I mean, I make my money on the floor because, you know, I ain't trying to get done dirty. But, hey, I'm going to play my role when the role is given to me and I feel good with it. 
But yeah, I'm just like, yeah, that was like one of the days that I went on. But to be quite honest, I'm just going to be factually speaking. I don't think I really want to date right now because actually, why am I even talking about my dating life? Next, Valentine's Day is coming up soon. This is like my third year in a row without getting a gift. And usually my mama give me a gift. My dad, you know, stuff like that. It's really cute. Very, you know, what I would do for my kids too. But when I mean like I haven't gotten anything like a gift or a dinner on Valentine's Day. Well, I did mess up the one from last year because I was kind of what I want to do. But um, yeah, I'm just going to say three. And I'm just like, bruh, which is okay. You know, I'm going to go to a Valentine's Day maybe. Let's see how sad and single I feel. Um, oh my God, I'm talking about dating again. All right, let's move on for real, for real. Okay, well. Lastly, I'll say this. My health life right now is not the greatest. I'm not going to lie. I love bread. I'm... I love bread. I'm t turning into Oprah Winfrey. And also, I don't know, y'all, give me some tips. Like any type of natural, you know, way of kind of curing that or stopping that. I just want to have a little more, like, uh, discipline because... Ever since I've moved to New York, I haven't had that much discipline. I've been doing so much, you know, a lot going on. So, you know, again, my health hasn't been prioritized, but I'm trying to get there. Wish me luck. Let's hope. I'm going to give myself a little challenge. I'm going to give myself a little six-week challenge. Six-week challenge. Um, I'm going to give myself a six-week challenge to see where I'm at from today or this week to whenever six weeks is from now um i might stand up and show you some differences maybe we'll see let's move on to our noteworthy topics tyree said that he wished he was latino so, which if we're being correct tyrese you could be latino you can be an afro latino right you can be from honduras you could be from the dr you can be from pr um DRPR, GRPR. Um, you could be from any country that's considered Latin America um, or Spanish speaking, right? Um, and still be you. I don't know what he meant by that. I mean, Tyrese is allegedly, you know. I feel like every year with Tyrese, there's always some new bull crap. It's like either he's fighting with a woman, um, he's cursing out a woman. He said that he wants to be Latino because he feels like they're more family oriented. They're more loyal to one another. Um, they're more invested in their communities. Tyrese, let me move over here. But I know you're not watching, which is okay. That's okay. Um, but you're saying all this now, this whole community stuff, why, you know, not too long ago. I think it was actually last year, 2023, where he was like on um instagram and x talking about some no one has his back he's losing it no one is like you know coming to his rescue um this divorce is taking a lot out of him blah 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 oh yeah and last year he was trying to sue home depot and he's like black community have my back tyrese like many black elites capitalists so-called black excellence i mean at the end of the day i will consider tyrese black excellence he's a phenomenal singer um he's in a franchise film what's it called the uh fast and fair um tyrese i feel like if you were a part of any community and you still have that same attitude no one would want you boo nobody wants you so you can sit around saying you were this ethnic group that ethnic group let's see maybe in the next few months he would want to be um you know middle eastern this is the same guy who um when he was making all that money, he's in the franchises. Did we hear about him donating or helping or leading any type of movement or um, communal investment type of programs? I'm just saying, you can't complain when you're not doing anything. You know what I mean? And this is coming from someone who actually tries her best, aka voting locally and, you know, uh, federally local leaders or giving my time to um younger women who also want to do the same stuff that i'm doing um tyrese's accomplishments and accolades come from his talent he's a very talented guy he sings he dances. well i don't know about that he sings and he acts <laughs> um and now he's at a point in his life where he's probably not getting those gigs a lot so now all he has is his time freedom and a camera camera phone doesn't matter what ethnic group or what group of people you come from, culturally, ethnically, nationally, if you act the way that you act, Tyrese, it won't happen. 
Okay, Tito. So the Grammys took place last week and there were a lot of first time winners and a lot of perpetual expected <sighs> trophy getters, right? So we have Coco Jones, we have SZA, we have um, Miley Cyrus, and then we have the one and only Tay Tay, Taylor Swift. Now, again, I can't tell you too much on this. I don't watch the award ceremonies like that anymore. When I was younger and TV was a spectacle, yes, I'll be out there with my mom in the living room. Let's get it. Like, let's see who's wearing what, who they coming with, you know, how they showing out. Now, um, now that I'm a little older and I know that certain things are, I wouldn't say rigged, right? Allegedly, allegedly. But certain things are already fixed. So, you know, people know what they're supposed to expect at these awards, which is fair. It is what it is. To me, it's like a ceremony, like a school ceremony. You know you were cum laude or magna cum laude. You know you're going to receive something. You know what it is. Um, but, yeah, um, the first time winners, most of them were black women. We even had Victoria Monet. I love that. First of all, Victoria Monet is your favorite's favorite. Okay? Let's talk about that because... Who would Ariana Grande be without Victoria Monet? And yes, I went there. I, and, and I like Ariana Grande, but let's be honest. Most of these girls wouldn't be who they are without black women penship. All right, let's move on quickly. Like I said, we have our perpetual winner, Taylor Swift. Everybody was kind of upset about it. Some weren't. To me... I don't, I'm kind of like indifferent to Taylor Swift. I'm not going to lie. When I was younger, I used to listen to some of her music, but now that I'm older, not so much. Um, it is what it is. I'm going to take a little break and I'll be right back. Black Hollywood seems to be fading away and like slipping. With this being said, I am going to be talking about modern day contemporary, aka 2024 modern day Hollywood, because we could say modern was probably the early 2000s, but uh, I'm using three specific examples um, and how this year has been very like, a lot is going on, a lot is going on. It's, it's literally February, which is like, damn, this year's a little popping, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about Taraji. Taraji set it off. Starting last year to this year now, because she said that um, when she was casted for the color purple, they wasn't trying to give her the dinero. Let's just watch, because I'm not going to speak for her. And I heard on the street, Taraji, you had the audacity to just say you're thinking about getting, stopping acting. We said, stop talking. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? Um, mm. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sisters say the same thing over and over. Um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. Mm -hmm. The math ain't mathing. Mm -hmm. And when you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Mm -hmm. Big bills come with what we do. Yes. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind That's us. Right. Yes. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million. No, that's not that. That didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top, mm -hmm. Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have 5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting, off of what you grossed, Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm. So I just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm only human and, and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm. like I never mm. did what mm. I just did and I'm just mm. tired. tired. Mm. So. After seeing that, it's sad to see a woman of that caliber cry in public to Gail, okay? Oprah Winfrey's, you know, that's her backup. That's who she get active with. But for me, watching that video, it kind of just made me think that as much as I've known Taraji, like most black people, a lot of other groups of people haven't known her, right? They don't know her in Hustle and Flow or Baby Boy. That's when I became privy to Taraji was baby boy. She was like this sassy. But her, everything about her character was believable. You know what I mean? It was relatable. Things I've seen growing up. But I feel like 
there was only a certain group of people who saw that. Just like Boys in the Hood, Coming to America. Those are all classic films in certain communities, okay? And unfortunately, when everybody don't know you, you don't bring them. It doesn't bring that much shine. It doesn't bring that much shine. So with that being said, Taraji's at an age in her life where she feels like she still has to keep working. And I remember Gabby, I'm sorry, Gabrielle Union made a TikTok saying that it was the, of course, I'm da 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 you know, those little trendy videos. And she was saying, you know, of course, I'm going to work until I die because I'm a black Hollywood actress. And um, I'm paraphrasing, but the point being is black people in Hollywood don't have the same type of lifeline like other groups of people do. The whites, right? I think no other group of people have the same type of lifeline they have. You know, some of them could come from like crack binges and alcoholic binges and still have a role in a Marvel film, right? Um, Stuff like that. Let's talk about Monique. Um, She was on Club Shay Shay this week and she was letting it out, okay? Okay. By the way, I'm just going to say this. I don't care if y'all mad at me. Shannon Sharp is not a good interviewer. I mean, he is a football player. It's not like I expected much. JK, JK, JK. I think a lot of football players are smart. Not Shannon Sharp, though. Maybe financially smart, but intellectually, uh, he don't know how to hold no conversation. He always sitting there with them jeggings. I mean, he is cute, though. But it's still like, I just, I feel like, it's not that I don't want him to do these interviews. I want people to come on Shannon Sharp and do these interviews. He deserves them. I'm assuming so. But I need somebody to better prepare for him. Again, hire me. I'm available, okay? I will hook you up. Because he was asking questions that, A, well, it was just like, so why you do that? Why you do that? Is that, is that all you got? Anyway, let's watch this video on what she said about the whole Taraji situation. Um, and then I want to, well, let's just watch that. See, when I saw Taraji mm-hmm. broken mm-hmm. on those platforms, it was painful to watch. However, Taraji and I had a conversation over a decade ago. Yes. In my trailer Mm -hmm. when I was doing the Monique show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you got to keep on getting it until your turn comes. And I said, Taraji, most of us die before our turn comes. We got to ask for it right now. Now, I understand that because there was a time I felt the same way. Exactly. Because that's what I was told. Right. You just keep going and we'll get him the next time. We'll get him the next time. We'll get him the next time. And the next time never comes. And then you see our sister broken sitting on those platforms. Now, when I said it, when I said it. Why didn't it get the traction when you said it that when she said it, now all of a sudden everybody is coming and I and I don't have a problem. I'm mm-hmm. glad. Yes. But if you said this a decade ago and I yes. remember you saying it over a decade ago, why didn't it get the traction? Why didn't it get the support? Why wasn't it propped up when Monique said it? I think there's a few reasons why. Number one, it was the messenger. I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. You're saying Oprah's name out loud. You're saying Tyler's name out loud. You're saying Lee's name out loud. You're saying Lionsgate out loud. That's not what we do. We say they. We say the people. We say the studio. We say the producers. How dare you actually say our heroes' names? So we have that, right? Okay. Monique is speaking in a way that he ain't kind with her words. She's saying that, you know, I work so hard, but I still don't get what I deserve. I think, again, when you look like this, there's a lot of you have to work twice as hard to get half of what they have. And I feel like that saying wouldn't exist if the people who came before us didn't experience it, one. And two, if they didn't think that we would experience it, too. I mean, obviously, from what our ancestors have gone through to now, But you know how they say, don't be mad at the player, be mad at the game. The game is still the same. The players are different. It's a new year. It's a new title. It's a new city. But it's the same regulated, systematic, you know what? Um, I don't know what can get me beep off of YouTube. In my YouTube bag, I'm not trying to lose it. I feel like Monique is the big sis that keeps it real with you, even when you don't want to hear it. Right? She's like, girl, I'm telling you, that's what they're going to do to you. 
even me, when people who are older than me or just, you know, my peers and they warn me about things, sometimes there's like this subconsciousness in my brain. I'm just like, oh, that, that's you. Who? That, that's, that's you. That's not me. That's you. It's like when you first start dating a guy and you think, oh, I don't know about you other hoes, but I, me, I'm going to be able to change him. And then he does you the same way he did the mother girl. Then you sitting there looking like a bump on a log because you thought you had it. To why Monique is still holding on to this beef with these black elites of Hollywood. Okay. Black Hollywood. Black excellence. I want you guys to listen closely to her story because I think, let's just listen. Right? When Oprah Winfrey called me up and she said, I got a call from your brother. And this is after I won the Oscar Award, mm -hmm. right? And your brother wants to come on the show and he wants to apologize to you for molesting you. And he wants to tell other people how to look out for a predator. Right. I said, Oprah, I said, I don't want anything to do with that cat. I said, but, and then she said, well, if you want me to scratch the show, I will scratch it. I said, sis, don't scratch it because he could be a different person. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get in the way if that cat is a different person. I just don't want no parts of it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I hung up that phone, Shannon, I was like, I appreciate that sister. Like, she didn't have to call me. She didn't. She didn't have to call me and say, right. I'm going to have your brother. Right. I start seeing commercials with my mother and my father and my other brother, who used to be my manager, mm -hmm. who knew the fear that I had with the brother that was up on stage, right? right? Mm -hmm. We never talked about my mother being there. She never told you that. You know how you feel about your grandparents? Yes, absolutely. You know the honor and the, how you speak about them? Mm -hmm. Imagine you then seeing your granddaddy and your grandmama on a show, and they're talking about somebody that violated you, and that woman didn't tell you that they were going to be there. How would you feel? I would feel like you, feel like you felt betrayed. So I remember coming home from school with Oprah. Oh, with Oprah. Child, my mom would have loved that Oprah actually took me. My mom would be like, okay, yeah, you can adopt my daughter. Mm -hmm. But let's just make some arrangements. But yes, you, Oprah, the billionaire, you got it. Um, just kidding. My mom is a good mom. If she wasn't going to adopt me, there would be a lot of rules and regulations to adopting me. Um, but I just remember growing up and watching Oprah with my mom, right, or with my older cousin. Um, we would just be in the house, and we'd just be so captivated by some of the topics she would bring up. And some of those topics were S.A., graping, um, the word that rhymes with elestation. But the point being is, and Oprah herself is a victim of S.A. So this is all, again, I'm just going to say allegedly because I wasn't there Y'all yeah, not going to take any two pennies that I have. To me, something in my spirit is telling me that Monique is correct about Oprah doing this to her. And if that's the case, Oprah, you know you are wrong. And it's okay to be wrong. You're human. I think even for me growing up and even to this day, Oprah is a, she's a god to moi and to a lot of young black girls and just women in general. I mean, Oprah gave out cars. Come on. She was that OK, but I feel like because Oprah was that girl, she took away sisterhood. She took away family. She took away, you know, sister, brother, whatever. And she just kind of just sat back into that capitalist, you know, mindset. And you can't be mad at her. Imagine you're climbing, you're winning on the financial, you know, ladder in America. Right. <laughs> Descendants of slaves. Who would want to stop that? I'm just saying. I mean, why wouldn't I want to keep going to the top? But unfortunately, I feel like when you start becoming millionaire, billionaire, there's a lot of things that have to be done. I mean, if you could show me an ethnically clean, moral, I'm sorry, ethnically clean. What the hell did that even mean? What I meant, I, what I meant was you could find a billionaire that has ethics or good moral codes. I would love to meet them. I mean, and again, no one's perfect. Even I'm not morally perfect. But point being is, I feel like Monique definitely keeps saying the same story and there's no changes. I feel like when someone is telling the truth, that's how it's supposed to go. It doesn't matter what environment you're in, you're going to be bringing the same tools. It doesn't matter what interview she's in, she's saying the same thing. And I think 
This is just my opinion. Oprah, don't be mad at me. I love you, Oprah. Please, please, I want to work with you. I want to meet you. I love you, Oprah. But also, love is being honest with somebody. Even though you do not know me, you probably will never meet me. But <sighs> I hope I meet you, girl. And I don't even care if you just breathe in my direction. I'll be so happy. But the point is, love is also being honest with somebody. The fact is, I saw that episode where Oprah brought Monique's whole family on. So obviously there is some truth. You brought her family on national TV. You asked them a lot of questions. And I remember watching that. I was young too. I don't know how old I was exactly. I remember being young and I remember thinking, where's Monique? I mean, the whole family's there, but why isn't she there? Because she wasn't on the stage. She wasn't there. And to me, if I if my family is somewhere and I'm not there, how does how are we even family at this point? That's kind of weird. Like that's so incomplete family. Again, I feel like Oprah probably does have an ego. She's successful. She's a woman. She's that girl. Um, and we love it. But also, wrong is wrong. Wrong is wrong. Like this damn dress. Wrong is wrong. But I also feel like um, I hope Oprah and Monique get to a point where they can discuss that, right, if possible. But um, big sis Oprah you have time to correct your error. You know, you're, I mean, you look good, okay? You're 70 and looking good, okay? You look like you're healthy. Hopefully you're here for another, you know, great amount of years. Um, so yeah, hopefully they can make it great in the future. But again, um, Black Hollywood, you're slipping. You're slipping because I think when it comes to Black Hollywood, like we don't see people like Oprah as the bad guy. And um Monique, unfortunately, you said she is a bad guy. I said what I said, and I'm going to keep saying it. And it is not anybody's right to tell anybody how to feel. That's just point blank facts, right? Like, we can't tell her how upset she should be about, about the situation. It's her life. You know, one thing about me, you know, I'm an air sign. I'm, but, you know, I very much believe in equilibrium. Um, so... It's okay to be wrong, but as long as we can try to correct those wrongs, right? If you want to, right? People sometimes don't. It is what it is. Let's bring Jay-Z, Sean Quata to the front. Again, I still love Jay-Z. I love the black elites. And when I say that, I don't mean not because of the money that they have harbored and made, but I love that these are all black people who came from humble beginnings and they showed us, look, ladies, it's pimp too. Go ahead and wash your shoulders. So yeah. Okay. So Jay-Z kind of surprised people and kind of basically, I wouldn't say poked the bear, but I'm just going to say poked the bear um, this past week because he said this at the Grammys. You know, it's music and it's opinion based, but you know, some things, you know, I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys, never won album of the year. That doesn't work. You know, some of you, some of you gonna go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. Some of you may get robbed. <laughs> some of you don't belong in the category. For me, Jay-Z, I'm just going to tug on your dress just a little bit, brother, because you're the same you're the same person who said in a whole song that I still, mm, but you're the one who said in a song, Ape, let's read the lyrics verbatim. Undefeated with the cane, too. I said no to the Super Bowl. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do I think I'm a rapper? Let me, let me read this like a normal person. Undefeated with the cane, too. I said no to the Super Bowl. You need me. I don't need you. Every night we in the end zone. Tell the NFL we in stadiums too. Mm, mm, mm. That shit still slaps today. But anyway, back to the point that I'm trying to make about Mr. JJ, Mr. Jay Z, Mr. Carter, please forgive me. Um, Jay Z, I think a lot of people, millennials, Gen Zs, we're just looking at you as the elders, as some of the, well, I'll say gatekeepers of black Hollywood. And I think we're just like, mm, scratching our heads like kind of just I wouldn't say confused but well confusion would be appropriate but maybe just disappointed because I don't know about y'all but I've been listening to Jay-Z since I've been little it's a hard knock life for us that's the first song I ever heard by him when I was little on MTV but after that I followed up on his catalog and 
Sepez. But the thing is, because he's always talked about owning ownership, doing the hard work, so people who are younger than him don't have to do as much as him, but you still got to work. Everybody got to work. But I think we're at a point in our life where we're just like Jay-Z, like Oprah, he's a god to many of us. You know, He comes from humble beginnings, like I said before. He has shown us what persistence and hard work can get you, you know? Again, I'm, I'm only saying this, some people are like, oh, who cares? As someone who's a part of the black community, as people who are descendants of slaves, mm, all that and a bag of chips, but you knew that already. So point being is, I think as someone who's a big fan of these people, um, again, Real love is also being honest. So for him to say this at the Grammys, we're just like, wait a minute, Jay-Z. Ain't you the same person who said that whole line? You know, we're a little confused. But again, I also feel like he's right. Beyonce, Beyonce versus Taylor, you know who I'm rocking with. Come on. Queen, King B is in the fucking building. Stand up. Like, we're rocking with Queen B. But point being is... The Grammys, like many other things in America, are owned by people who don't look like us. And you cannot complain about a system that's allowing you in. You're an invite. But, and I think many people around the world would say the same thing about Beyonce. Her music is more popping, it's better, um, whatever, whatever, whatever. She also has been in the game much longer. So I feel like sometimes, in my opinion, there should be seniority given, right? Someone has had this amount of numbers in the game and they've proven themselves year after year, financially, you know, societal, culturally, whatever. Unfortunately, they weren't willing to do that for Beyonce. It is what it is. Um, there's not much we can do about it, but it is what it is. But what I, what I will say is, just to conclude everything, when it comes to this topic of black Hollywood, black elites, um, when it comes to them complaining or saying certain things, I'm on the side of they deserve to do those things. I mean, they've been in this industry for so long. Taraji, Jay-Z, Monique, these are people in their 50s, 40s, you know, and they've been get into the bag since they've been in their teens, early 20s. And I know for a lot of people who might be like young or even older people, depend on, depend on, depending on your perspective, some people were saying, oh, well, why complain? Why keep talking about it? You're not going to change it. Why bring it up over and over again? In my opinion, um, again, they've gotten to an age in their life where to me, they're allowed to talk about it. It's like when they say, when you're an old person, old people just do whatever they want and say whatever they want. Of course, there's always like consequences on the other side. Some people will accept it, some people won't. But I guess for me, I feel like when it comes to black Hollywood complaining or anybody in Hollywood complaining, especially when they have the same amount of numbers that these three people have, Taraji, Jay-Z, and Monique have, I think they have the right. And I think they should be heard and listened to. You know, These are people who have shown us that they're consistent, um, they're persistent, um, and they're also dedicated. Because even for me, I have, I'm very fragile when it comes to like success, right? If I don't get something right the first time, the second time, I immediately want to throw it away and not do it over again. I mean, godly, when it comes to this podcast, I've, been, I've had so many like arrows, but I'm just like, if you really want something to happen, you're going to defeat the odds. You're going to try your best to, right? Your destiny is in life, it's going to happen. I have a lot of respect for a group of people who constantly put in the work. And again, they're at an age where I feel like they don't have to shut up anymore, you know? Um, and of course, there's still going to be consequences for them, even at an age where they're like, like I said, some of them are in their 50s, like half a century years old. They're still not going to be allowed to be as transparent and as autonomous as they should be because, again, it's still an industry and there's still rules, right? And this is why Monique has been looked at as, you know, like a pariah when she isn't, you know. She's just saying... I've been in the game for so long. The time I was done dirty and brought it up, everyone is kind of like going down on me. Like, oh my God, be quiet. You're this, you're that. People are being fat phobic, colorist, not, not, not surprising. And also misogynistic. And some are doing it at all. They're doing misogynoir, fat phobia. And it's just like, this is why certain times people are afraid to even say something in the first place, right? Right. Um, and then 
the same people who probably are complaining about these groups of people who are complaining about being in Hollywood are the same people who want to get into Hollywood, right? So we have to be, we have to just make it make sense. And for me, like I said, I'm on the side of they have the right to complain. They have the right to express themselves. Now, the truly important thing is even if they do all this complaining, are they going to be answered? Are these complaints going to be corrected or mandated? We don't know. Only time would tell. When you do something, the time that you're doing it, at least for me, I'm a big proponent and a big fan of thinking about the people who are going to come behind you, right? Whether it's like your kids, your siblings, your friends, whatever leads you to like just be hopeful. You got to think about like what's coming behind you, at least for me. So I feel like working at it, fighting at it. I think it's a good idea that these people, especially at the you know level that they're at, um, in the Hollywood pyramid, I think it's very important for them to show outsiders looking in, like, look, yes, I know y'all think we rich, we this, we that, but it's still not perfect. And unfortunately, I hate to say, when people who look like us, or just any human being in general, when they start to climb the financial ladder, it gets to a point where they do look at people like, get away. If you don't do what I want, get away. And I only know this because I went to a PWI, and some of the people that used to walk into those classrooms and who their parents were, some, not all, but a, a lot, it dictated how they treated other people around them. And if that's what money is, <sighs> that's a yikes. Anyway, um, I'm not going to do a question and answer portion for this episode because I didn't get any questions this week from my friends and family. But um, hopefully I can bring it to you guys next week. And as always, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.